everyone, Melissa here, back with another video. And today we're doing a reaction to Love is Blind Japan, kind of final thoughts of all the cast. So let's get into it. So my hair looks insane right now. I No one can see me except those of you on YouTube. Uh, so you can attest to how insane my hair looks. And those of you who will be watching this video whenever it comes out. Um, yes, I know I look insane today, but my hair is just doing what she does and I'm letting her do what she does. Um, that's really that's really where we're at right now. So I'm gonna move the mic all the way to my face while I talk today. Um, so hopefully you guys can all hear me clearly as I rant about Love is Blind. Um, so today we're going over the cute Love is Blind, which is Love is Blind Japan. So on my channel, I've already released a video talking about Love is Blind US uh, season two. And then last show, I talked about Love is Blind um, Brazil. Whoo! Whoa. And today we'll be talking about Love is Blind Japan just to kind of round out all of the Love is Blind franchise for now. Because there are new seasons probably coming in the next year or so. Um, so let's start with our first couple, which is Odachi and Nanako. Uh, Odachi, he is a comedian. And I believe Nanako is a... Um, Ex ballet dancer, and honestly, I thought that this was one of the couples that would have been successful based off their communication in the pods and based off of the way that when they met, they seemed very compatible, they seemed to be a good match. And then as the show went on, unfortunately, Arachi, he he's not a very communicative person in person, that's a lot of persons in one sentence. Um, but as we saw the show, you could see that um, in the house, he didn't really talk to her that much during the honeymoon. He would wake up and go straight to work on his computer, or he would wake up and they would have breakfast together or lunch together or dinner together, and he would not speak at all. And for her, she had previously been a, in an engagement or a marriage. I think it was a marriage with someone else. Um, and he was very much like that as well. And she wanted to marry someone that was more sociable and she thought Odachi was that based off of their relationship in the pods and it was really sad to see that they didn't work out because I think that again based off of their pod interactions you could tell that they would have been a good match if um as I like to say it when you go on your first few dates when you date for the first six months um, as it may you tend to try to show the best parts of yourself not uh, parts of yourself that might be fractured in any way by society or by people and how they treated you and I think that in some extent Odachi did that because as a comedian it's not typically a job that many people would kind of know about slash do and for Nanako I feel like she really wanted that in a partner and so seemingly that now she'd wanted that I think it's kind of sad to see but, fun fact, if you did like either of these two, Nanako has gone back to ballet. I believe now she's teaching it. And then Odachi, of course, he's still a comedian and he's now working in Kochi, Japan. So that's really great for them. But ultimately, I think that both of them were very nice. So I, again, it's not like US and Brazil where you could like hate on a character like these. I felt like this show, you were rooting for every single person so much so that like, it's so hard to talk about them because I can't see either of them in negative light because I think that they tried their best and I, I guess that's all you could really hope for and I think that hopefully in the future he learns from this experience and learns why he may struggle in relationships and she is able to find someone that um, is what she's looking for because this is probably really hard not i'm not saying that it's not hard for him as well because it is as you can see when they broke up um he was very emotional because he felt like if they if he had knew earlier like maybe he would have been able to salvage their relationship and things like that um so i would say for her maybe bringing things up being more honest being more forthright and for him i guess being more aware of your partner i know it's not something that is predominantly easy to do but i think if you can become more apparently like aware of your partner it does help in um like you being able to know but up next is my favorite couple um well one of my favorites and that is rotoyo uh i'm so sorry if i said that wrong and 
Motomi. Uh, again, don't know if I said that wrong either, but I love them. I think that they were the most wholesome, clean couple this entire show, and I was rooting. I was like, please, please don't have any scary bad things happen. Um, one running, I guess, joke is that uh, I feel like I said his name wrong. Uh, Royotaro, uh, Royotaro. I'm so sorry. I again, I can't like I. I'm really just, I, I don't want to insult anyone by saying his name wrong. Uh, but I think that you could tell that he was very willing to ch not change himself, but willing to do small things for his partner that made her know that he cared. Like, for example, he has blonde hair because he dyes his hair. And in Japan, apparently that made him scary because his hairstyle and, the, and his style of dressing is scary i don't think that but i think that if you were in the states no one would bat an eye literally you can wear whatever you want in the states and like no one in my generation will bat, bat an eye maybe my grandma's generation maybe a little bit of my mom's but um like for like we're just so desensitized to whatever people wear i feel like this point in the states that it's like oh cool love that for you doing great bud um kind of moments uh and so i think the small gesture that he did where he dyed his hair black um just so he would be more conventional you could say looking when meeting her parents was I think really sweet that you saw that he really wanted to make it work and he wanted to put every positive foot forward in order to let her family know she's safe with me I care about her and I think that is the sweetest most wholesome thing so I really enjoyed how they kind of showed that relationship and I, I like that even though they have a very traditional relationship in terms of like she cooks and like cleans and he like doesn't do those things i think it's nice in terms of the way their relationship works i don't think it was like he's like i don't want to ever do x y and z i think if she were to ask he would at least attempt which i think is very nice um and then i love motomi i do follow her on instagram she dyed her hair blonde when they came at the last episode when they did kind of like that a check-in with all the couples at the end i saw like they walked down the street and i was like if I saw these people in real life, I would be like, this is like a fashion like couple. Like these are these two are like on Instagram modeling like oh my like her blonde hair, his blonde hair, they're matching outfits. I wanted her outfit. I like literally I saw them and I was like, oh my gosh, Avengers. Um <laughs> love them. Uh they're my favorite couple and I think she's so sweet, so wholesome. And I think that the way that their families were able to meet each other and, and like grow, and I think it, it was really, like I think their story was very beautiful to watch. And yeah, you should definitely follow them on Instagram because they are the most wholesome, cute couples I've ever seen. If you want to see Rotoyo, Rota, I'm so I mm, I can't I can't I keep trying and I sound I feel like I sound like I'm being so rude. <laughs> But he, his Instagram is very focused on hair So, because he's a hairstylist. So if you want to see things like that, check that out. But if you want to see the couple travels and like things like that, then follow Motomi because I think you'll be able to see that. All right, next um, is Miss Architect herself. <laughs> I say this as an architecture student myself, so don't worry. I'm not like making fun of her or anything. Uh, but Mori, oh, oh, there's like a little bug in here. Oh no, it's fine. It's fine. I'm I'm not a baby. It's literally so small. I don't know why I freaked out like that. But um, Mori and Minami, Mina, me. Okay, we're just we're gonna go with that. Um, they were another couple that didn't work out in the show. Um, I kind of was really rooting for Minami because I really felt like he was trying to change himself not to the extent of kyle in season two of love is blind oh my god kyle um but you can tell that like for example she was like i don't like body hair so if like you shave like throw away your body hair and things like that which is like understandable but like ma'am sometimes it's just the hair sometimes is just gonna be there and you're gonna have to accept it and i'm not saying like he should never like clean up after he shaves i'm just saying he shouldn't have to do so much to cater to you but also you are trying your best as well because i could see that she was trying and i think to some extent 
both of them were trying so hard to keep this relationship alive that it was kind of like they were both just making themselves unhappy and unhappy with the other person because they were just kind of in this mindset of we have to make it work because we're on this show we have to make it work because like x y and z reason and i just think like and i just think that like um it's sad that we've come to the time where like people in their early 30s or people in their 20s are like i need to get married no matter what like i will change for this person i will do x y and z um when honestly they shouldn't have to do that um i don't know why i'm getting so like philosophical over like love is blind japan but i think it's because it's one of the more realistic human interactions for the love is blind franchise i feel like a lot of couples go on love is blind and they're very dramatic and like it's very crazy but all of the japan ones have felt very like stable understandable reasons for the not everyone for the most part we'll say that um but <laughs> it's not funny it's not funny it's not funny i promise um but i think that that's one thing i i wish to see grow i do like at the end um how Mori, he's talking about like what he wants to do with um, his career as a doctor because he's currently like he works in a practice but he doesn't have his own practice and, like how he wants to help people with what he does as being a um it was really nice to hear and it was really nice to um see so i i like that as well at from them and i think that each of them as individuals are very strong like independent and I felt like this made them very um, much struggle, especially with the amount of differences they have. A lot of people tend to say differences attract, opposites attract, but that's not always the case because you don't want to grow old and just have so many, not dislikes, but so many things that you have to overlook that make you uncomfortable or make you upset and i think that they were doing that so much so that neither of them were happy and i'm just going on circles talking about them right now because i felt like that's kind of my consensus um with both of them but um overall i don't think they were the most screen entertainment couple but i do think that their story is important to share because i feel like a lot of people were and are in relationships like this right now so that's what I think but let's go and talk about oh my gosh okay all right all right I love this couple but the show stressed me out and that is water 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 and Midori Midor Midori um oh my god okay I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry it is it's fine we're doing great here um Midori and water uh I love them I loved this couple and I was really rooting for them even when Midori was like oh I don't know because he's not my physical type or things like that I loved this couple I think that when they were in the pods and he was going between her and some of the other girls I was like you better choose this man because you two are like my favorite of all the other girls he was talking to I was like she is the one like I can visualize them together I can see them together I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So when they met, when he proposed to her, I was like, yes, yes, this is what I wanted. This is the couple I wanted. Um, sorry, 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 calm, I'm breathing, you're good. Um, but this was the couple I really wanted to get together and I'm really happy they did. Um, also her wedding dress, stunning. Their wedding photos on her Instagram, stunning, stunning, absolutely. Like, ugh. And she's so pretty and I, I'm so happy for them. Okay. Um, one thing that made me sad, but it's like understandable, is she's very much like into being fit. And he he's not fat, but let me just preface. But he does have like a dad bod stomach thing, which is absolutely fine. Um, and one of the things that they did was that um leading up to their wedding, because he said in his interviews, like, I don't want to stand up there and feel kind of like I'm not everything I can be or something like that. It's not ex his exact words, but kind of pertaining to how she was very fit and slim and he felt that he was a little bit less than her in terms of like his fit 
Yes. So much so that they did workouts together. And I feel like working out together as a couple, it did help them to build bonds because she saw like his determination to be better and to be kind of someone that she could be proud of. Because one thing that she wasn't sure about was um, the way that he looked in comparison to what his voice sounded like. And she struggled with that. Um, But she also couldn't see herself with anyone else because he was basically perfect, as she said, in every other aspect besides what she had physically wanted in a partner. And so that's why I was like slightly worried that they weren't going to get married because I was like, I don't know if she's going to not marry him based on literally just a physical, not even attraction, but like a physical presentation of him so I was like really nervous and like I felt like throughout the whole thing he was very understanding he was very much like I'm doing I'm gonna do everything possible because I really love this girl um so he's so so sad like when he was proposing the second time he was so nervous because he was like in the pods she said yes because she didn't know what I look like yet but now that she knows me there's a possibility that she'll say no um and I felt I was so worried I was like please show don't I keep hitting this mic. Please show, don't hurt me to the extent that she's going to say no to his proposal in person when we are like an episode, two episodes from the season finale. Like, don't do that. And she did say yes, but she said that she's willing to try, not like yes, 100%. But they are married and they are getting their official like wedding registration stuff done in 2022. They looked stunning together. Um, they were also at the reunion because they had the couples that like got married at the reunion and then they had um, the other people whose return to single life question mark um, have like their own individual like moments to like talk and talk about their growth and you can see like some of them hang out and things like that um, but overall my favorite couple um, like I just I I love them because they were so fascinating to watch but I love them as individuals and I do follow, I believe, Midori, Midori on um, 